welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 infinity q60 red sport courtesy of infinity of mechanicsburg of course in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am definitely quite excited to be in this one today reason being is because i actually owned an infinity g35 this is kind of the possessor of that one back when it was car of the year and i absolutely loved that car I remember my now wife and i drifting that thing all over the place it was super fun and so now years later we are back at it again so what do you say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so msrp for the 2020 infinity q60 red sport will start at fifty-seven thousand one. $150 and that one would be a rear wheel drive configuration you can get all-wheel drive and we do have the all-wheel drive configuration today if you went that route that pricing is going to start at $59,150 and so regardless of which setup that you go with power plant is actually going to be the same on this one powering this beast will be a three liter twin turbo v6 putting out 400 horsepower at 6400 rpm 350 pound feet of torque available at 1600 rpm power center rear wheels or all wheels through a seven speed automatic with paddle shifters thank you nissan and infinity for not throwing a cbt in this thing but those paddle shifters will actually include downshift rev matching as well another added bonus there and zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 4.5 seconds which we will be testing out in a little bit here with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 27 highway for the rear wheel drive 19 city 26 highway for the all-wheel drive configuration either way taking premium unleaded fuel aka 91 octane and higher basically and so before we do any kind of paddle shifter tests or fun accelerations in this one I did want to mention there is a drive mode button directly behind the circular dial and shifter there and so when pressed those driving modes are going to include standard snow eco sport sport plus and personal I emphasize snow because that is pretty darn cool for a car like this to have a snow driving mode and all-wheel drive for that matter back when it was the g35 it was just a rear wheel drive setup but still a fun car don't get me wrong but i love that it's all wheel drive especially living here in pennsylvania but getting off point what those driving modes are actually going to do is adjust things like the throttle response shift points the steering sensitivity and the suspension settings as well and i'll get more into that later but having said all of that let's go ahead and play around with that driving mode let's put it in sport plus sounds like a fun one let's go ahead and push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full manual shift mode here and that is going to allow us to go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and so let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here you guys hear that downshift rev matching listen holy crap yeah paddle shifters are ridiculously quick kind of took me by surprise there i was expecting a little bit of delay i'm being quite honest but dang they were quick holy moly Wow, yeah, definitely paddle shifters are fun. Certainly not gonna have any regrets playing with them. That was fun, dude. And another thing with the paddle shifters, they did have downshift rev matching. That was pretty cool. There's not a whole lot of cars with paddle shifters that do that. So I love that Infinity does that with the Q60 Red Sport here. So well done. All right, now let's give control back to the car here. I'm just gonna slide the shifter all the way to the right here. That's gonna give the Q60 back full control and from a standstill, let's hit the gas. Wow, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness i missed that that was ridiculous no spinning whatsoever and that is key because of course with the rear wheel drive configuration that i had back in the day i kind of used it as a drift car that was fun but dang you can feel it you can feel it in your chest when you hit the gas there that was amazing Wow, that brings me back. Kind of tempting, kind of tempting. That was fun. And so, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 14 inch ventilated front discs with four piston front calipers in the back, 13.8 inch ventilated rear discs with two piston rear calipers. As far as the braking feel goes, 100% no issues whatsoever. There's certainly no brake pedal delay. It brings you to an immediate stop as you would imagine with that kind of a brake set up to be quite honest but 
Definitely a very nice braking setup for the Q60. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And the best part about the suspension system, as I was alluding to earlier, is the adaptive suspension, the adaptive damping system. So essentially what that is going to do is it's gonna absorb a lot of the road's imperfections, not only giving you a smoother ride, but it will also tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, again, giving you the best of both worlds, a little better handling there. So absolutely love that the Q60 Red Sport comes with that. That is a huge plus in my book and a very smooth ride, I can tell you without a doubt, definitely absorbing PA's road imperfections quite nicely so far. So you could tell it's there. It's definitely a night and day difference if you were to not have that adaptive damping system. As far as steering feel goes, it is just fine. Definitely a heavier weight when you get into that Sport and Sport Plus driving mode comparatively speaking to the standard driving mode that I actually just put it back in right now but in addition to that if you wanted the even heavier weighted steering wheel there is actually a proactive package and that package goes for $2,850 that's going to give you direct adaptive steering essentially a better steering feel a heavier steering feel I should say and just more of a direct response so that is yet another option you can go with although we don't have that option today but if you were planning on really taking this thing through the back roads it's definitely something that's going to give you a little bit more fun on those back roads and something to consider there. As far as cabin noise goes, it's been perfectly quiet in here today, so definitely no issues there. This is a luxury vehicle, so you're of course not going to have any issues there. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I never had any issues in my G35 either, so visibility is right on point there. In addition to that though, rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard on the Q60 Red Sport, so that is a huge plus as well. Perhaps the only room for improvement that I really found when it comes to visibility is a head-up display might be nice, better help keep your eyes on the road but other than that it's not necessary it's just maybe an option that they could throw in there if they wanted to but they don't have to but anywho that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this iridium blue 2020 infinity q60 red sport all right and here she is you guys with this amazing design part of the reason why i got one back in the day the design is 100 on point really always has been with the q60 and my old g35 but anyways let's go ahead and start up front here black mesh front grille coming standard to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights and those headlights of course coming with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out they will turn on automatically for you there just below front fog lights coming standard once again and like i had mentioned earlier with that proactive package that is also actually going to give you an adaptive front lighting system with auto leveling meaning when you're going around the bend at night that adaptive front lighting system will swivel based on your steering angle better help illuminating what is around the bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or any kind of other animals or even people really but so that is definitely a huge safety feature in itself but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side on this one chrome window surrounds coming standard also chrome accenting found on the doors and you will get some chrome fender accenting as well they kind of look like boomerangs but they definitely look good down there gloss black power adjustable heated side mirrors with led integrated turd signals will come standard and they will actually also be auto dimming side mirrors with the reverse tilt down feature and so auto dimming meaning you usually have an auto dimming rear view mirror but auto dimming side mirrors is one of those luxury features that you really do need to go with the luxury brand to get so that is definitely a huge plus there taking a look down at the wheel setup 20 by 9 inches up front 20 by 9.5 inch aluminum alloys if you were to go with the rear wheel drive configuration and so that is probably one of the things that kind of frustrated me a little bit when i had the rear wheel drive set up back in the day you can't rotate the tires but it is a cool drift car if you go that route but either way if you go with the all-wheel drive setup you don't have to worry about that then you can rotate the tires and that is a 20 inch non-staggered aluminum alloy setup with summer tires for the rear wheel drive setup and all season performance tires for the all-wheel drive setup and you don't need summer tires with the all-wheel drive setup let me tell you there was no loss of grip whatsoever during that acceleration so tires are definitely on point with this one so but now make your way to the back integrated rear spoiler coming standard led taillight also standard on this one and just below it all perhaps my favorite part dual exhaust outlets with brushed satin tips and look at the detail on these brushed satin tips they look absolutely aggressive and menacing and so I do believe you guys know what we have to do next therefore as always here is that exhaust clip All 
right, you guys, and so now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob, so simply hold that down if you like. There is also a button by the driver's side left knee that is yet another way to go about opening that rear trunk, but my favorite way to go about opening this one, there's actually a silver button within the driver's side tail light. You almost never see that. That's pretty quirky and that's pretty cool. So I do like that it's there, but I'm gonna pick that way to open it up any day of the week. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 8.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, those rear seats, of course, do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. Making our way to the rear legroom. This is one of my favorite parts from my G35 back in the day. Rear legroom is actually all right for a two plus two seater. It comes in at 32.4 inches. So believe it or not, I was able to fit my friends back there and yeah they weren't the most comfortable in the world but it worked so it does work for rear passengers even if they're adults so i don't know for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there and they do have a little tray area in the middle with a couple cup holders as well so rear passengers although it might be a little bit cramped of course it's doable and it has been done by myself so that's pretty cool make our way up to the front seats eight-way power adjustable front seats will come standard with power lumbar adjustment and power torso adjustment you don't often see that so we do love that if you're taking the back roads a little bit faster that's pretty cool heated front seats coming standard of course with a leather finish although there are no ventilated seats so i guess that's one drawback but i don't really care quite honestly personally at least but Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it is heated. And that is a huge plus as well for super cold days in Pennsylvania. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the paddle shifters are finished in black to match the steering wheel. So a lot of other paddle shifters, just about in every other manufacturer, they're finished in a silver or magnesium finish, but in the infinity they are in black and i kind of like it they look pretty good up there but take your way to the startup you will find all of those buttons located on one side of the key infinity logo at the very top lock unlock button to pop the rear hatch that circular button at the very top just below the infinity logo that is your remote start coming standard by the way that's a huge plus and of course it's all keyless entry so simply just leave the key in your pocket while walk up to the q60 there is a push button start located just to the right of the gauge setup so i'm just going to put my foot on the brake here and press that engine start button and so but once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a smallish digital display front and center which by the way can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel it's going to tell you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your trip a trip b of course there's a compass up there what radio station you're on there's some safety features tire pressure information when you need your next oil change you're going to find that actually saves you some money there and there's a couple other things you can display up there if you want wanted to as well but maybe in the future infinity if you wanted to throw a digital gauge setup up there like Audi or Mercedes Benz or something like that that'd be pretty cool too but nonetheless still a very nice gauge display up there but now let's make our way to overall interior quality here power moonroof coming standard there is a black headliner that comes standard since we're looking up at the moonroof right now would have loved to have seen that as like a microfiber suede headliner that would be cool in the future as well dual zone climate control coming standard overhead sunglass holder as well and overall a very high-end finish to the q60 red sport you're going to find things like authentic carbon fiber there's a lot of fake carbon fiber going out there right now with other manufacturers but infinity uses the real deal on the doors of course also just around the infotainment displays and around the cup holders down here by the shifter as well so all of this authentic carbon fiber i love the two-tone leather the light leather with the dark leather contrast there's some red stitching within that leather as well very very high-end finishes also like the pennsylvania turn pike ticket holder up here on the driver's side driver's side vanity mirror that's pretty cool also home link controls for up to three different garage doors that's a huge plus because the alternative is a rattling garage door opener on that vanity mirror nobody likes that overall it's a very high-end finish as far as room for improvement goes maybe some ambient lighting would be pretty cool or some microfiber suede finishes to go along with that super high-end carbon fiber so in the end a very on point finish just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet and some more charging ports within the center armrest you got a usb charging port phone port auxiliary port 12 volt power outlet once again so 
definitely a very nice finish here. But so now you guys, I put it in the title of this video. There is one major change for the 2020 Q60 Red Sport and a change that is needed. And I wouldn't buy a car without this these days actually. And it has to do with the tech display. And so actually you have two infotainment screens front and center here. You have an eight inch upper screen, a seven inch lower screen. They're both color touchscreen displays. Wouldn't have minded seeing one large tablet style display screen up there or even a larger horizontal screen but that's just my personal preference but bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard but now the best part for the 2020 q60 red sport android auto and apple carplay has finally arrived that does come standard now on this one and this is a huge deal for me all you need to do is simply hook your smartphone up to the q60 therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that upper tech display and with google mapping you know it's constantly updated it actually detects speed traps on my way here for instance even so these are some of the reasons i love android auto apple carplay of course you can actually also like and dislike your pandora songs up on on that screen as well so definitely a huge fan i'm glad infinity finally put that on this one factory navigation system though nonetheless coming standard you can of course check out your radio settings up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound system i have a feeling this is going to be another huge plus on this one 13 speaker Bose sound system with metal or aluminum speakers and they look absolutely wonderful so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Like it's water on my liver, can't afford it. I'm Massaging seats is what you get with that sound system. That was amazing. I also had a Bose sound system in the G35 that I used to have. It never broke on me, never failed me. Always had a ton of bass just like this one, crystal clear. I absolutely love that sound system in the Q60 here. So well done, Infinity. Well done, Bose, I should say. So that was intense last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display though is when you do put the q60 red sport in reverse you will find a rear view camera with a 360 degree monitor letting you know what is all around you so you don't go running anything or anyone over which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags will come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also tire pressure monitoring system there is a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert forward collision warning forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection all of this stuff coming standard on the q60 red sport and then once again alluding back to that proactive package that is going to in additional to what i already mentioned add adaptive cruise control distance control assist lane departure warning blind spot intervention system high beam assist pre-crash seat belts and an adaptive front lighting system like i had mentioned earlier with auto leveling ain't so but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. All right, for all my JDM guys out there questioning where this thing is actually made, where the Q60 is assembled, it is 95% Japan. This is 100% JDM still to this day. That is awesome.